Hello everyone, how you guys doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day, and today we are here with an herb brown guide for old school runescape in my endless adventure to make as many guides as possible. So hopefully you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like. With that said, let's go ahead and get on into the video. So we'll start with why would you do herb runs in the first place? For one, if you're a main account, it provides hourly profit at a very low level. A consistent flow of GP is very important early on, so it's going to be a good utility in that form. I like to combine it with Slayer because it takes about an hour for your herbs to be completed. So usually you can go do a task and then come do a farm run and person i like that on top of that for iron man this is an essential you cannot go into iron man without having to do tons and tons and tons of herb runs so it's just going to be something you have to do for most everyone i'd recommend it unless you already have a ton of money and don't really want the farming xp so we'll get right into the beginner unlocks there are a ton of things you can unlock to improve your farming run so we'll start with all of those that you can go ahead and get starting with the early ones this is basically a necessity and that is fairy tale part one from this you get the magic secateurs which provide 10 percent more yield from your herbs definitely definitely recommend that before you even get going you'll also get some farming xp from that quest so that's nice too beyond that ghost ahoy is an amazing quest to unlock because through that you get access easily to another herb patch by completing priest and peril but through completing ghost ahoy you have access to the ecto file which is a really quick teleport to be able to get here so i'd highly recommend it another quest that will unlock you an herb patch is my arms big adventure not too hard of a quest but you still need to get as many herb patches into your run as you can, so this is useful. And then a good med level unlock is the Making Friends with My Arm quest. Through that, you get another herb patch, and you get access to two amazing teleports with the Icy Basalt and Stony Basalt. You make those yourself, and those teleports you directly to two different herb patches we'll be talking about today. So that's like the final cherry on top as far as the herb patches go. There's also another one, but we'll talk about that more in a second. It's really, really far down the line. So now that we've gone through the quest unlocks, we'll move towards the diary unlocks. These two are pretty exciting accessible in the med level game. That is the Lumbridge Medium Diaries and Beyond, and the Artie Medium Diaries and Beyond. By completing the Medium Diaries, you get three teleports to the patches in those respective areas per day. If you complete the Hard, you get five teleports, and if you complete the Elite of those Diaries, you get Unlimited. So, the higher the better, but just being able to have three teleports a day still is really nice because these teleports spawn you really close to these herb patches. A couple more Diary Unlocks so you can get that increase your yield. We have the Karend Hard Diary and the Kandarin Medium and Beyond. Both of these at their base level give you a 5% less chance of an herb life depleting. The Candor and Med Diaries give you 5% while the Hard Diaries give you 10% and the Elite gives you 15. Essentially each herb that you plant has three lives and then once you finally use the last life the herb goes away. So this just allows your plants to stay alive longer and for you to get more herbs which is great. Now for some late game unlocks we have the Hasidious patch that once you have 60% Hasidious favor and 65 farming you can access that. There's a teleport really close by so that's a great one to have. The From the Card Diaries unlock an agility shortcut, which you need 73 agility to be able to navigate. However, if you completed Making Friends with My Arm, then the teleport with the Stony Basalt will just put you right up there. And then finally, the Morantania Elite unlocks an entirely new patch, but most people aren't going to have access to this because there are some really high requirements to the Morantania Elite. But if you're one of the lucky few, then that is for you. So now that we've talked about the things you can unlock through quests and diaries, here are a few extra tips for navigating your farm runs. The Addis Plant can be planted in the Farming Guild and gives you a 5% less chance to lose an herb life when farming. And the seeds for this can be obtained via killing Hespori, so that's basically a daily boss that you can kill within the farming guild it's very easy and accessible at med levels so i would recommend doing that for this nice little plant there's also a sister plant here that offers 80 percent less disease across your plants not as good as the other but also an alternative because you won't always have enough seeds to be able to sustain so you'll have to change those as you go and then a useful spell that you can throw on in is the resurrect crop spell available on the arcea spellbook this has a 50 to 75% chance of working depending on your magic level and it requires 78 magic to be able to use in the first place. It is a bit costly so keep that in mind it's about 6 or 7k GP per use so you just can't go around throwing that all willy nilly but if you find it worth it to you you could work that into your farm runs if you'd like. Then getting into the inventory what we're going to bring compost is the most important factor for this you have normal super and ultra compost most people are going to want to use ultra compost on most everything because it isn't too expensive and it's very useful. It increases your profit through herb farming quite a bit, so I'd highly recommend it. If you don't know how to make compost and you're on an Ironman, I also have a guide for that, so feel free to check that out. As far as which seed is best for you, that's a very case-by-case -case basis. There are so many factors, so the Old Score S Wiki is a great place to go ahead and find that out for yourself. You fill out this entire sheet of the farming level, how many allotments you have access to, and all of those things, and then basically it spits out the formula of what's going to be best for you. As you can see on this level 75 account at the moment, it seems that Snapdragon 
Dragon and then Rayonars are the best, which makes sense. Those are the two most in-demand herbs because prayer potions and super swords are always being used. And then after that, you have Toad Flags, Torstal, and whatever it may be for you, but I would check that out. You could also take into account XP per run if that really matters to you. That's an alternative factor where you might, you might care a little bit about it, but highly recommend that tool. So, so useful. And before we get into my inventory and my gear, I will show you the patch locations and you can choose which teleport is going to be best for you depending on all of these different locations and which ones you have access to. So most everyone should have access to all these first four locations. All the teleports are listed right there. The only one that's super annoying is the Draenor patch if you don't have either the Explorer's Ring or a Glory because then you got to run all the way down from Falador and it's just oh, it's so painful. But beside that, all that is listed there for you. And then for these four locations, it is very straightforward in terms of how to get there. There's very few options. I'd compare Trollheim here to the Falador patch of yesteryear. Trollheim is so bad if you don't have the Stony Basalt. So I'd highly recommend it if you're thinking about getting it. And then for the Harmony Island patch, you're just going to want to use the Harmony Island teleport. And that is it as far as what you need to know for teleports. Let's get on into an example run. So for my gear, all I have is a full set of Graceful. In addition to that, the Magic Secatures that I mentioned earlier. And I have a Skills Necklace to be able to teleport to the Farming Guild. In my inventory, I have a Rune Pouch, which is holding Law Runes, Air Runes, and Earth Runes, which will allow me to teleport to Camelot and my house which is located in Karend. I have a Seed Dibber, a Rake, and a Spade because you're going to need those. In addition to that, an Ecto File to get up to Morantania. A Bottomless Compost Bucket, which can save you money, is also very useful for Iron Man if you have it. I then have an Arty Cloak to be able to teleport to that patch, an Explorer's Ring to teleport to that patch, a Stony Basalt Teleport, an Icy Basalt Teleport, and beyond that, eight seeds. You could also bring some flower patch seeds and some allotment seeds if you were really into it. Personally, I don't do too much of that, but it's up to you. A couple notes before we start, I have two different seeds because as an Iron Man, you want to use your Ranars and Snapdragons on the disease free patches, while the other seeds you can just use wherever. On a main account, you wouldn't really have that same issue. And also on the sidebar of your rune like client, there is a time tracking feature where you can check out and see when your herbs are actually done growing. Very useful tool that Runelight has installed. With that said, let's go ahead and get rolling. So I'm actually gonna bank this stony basalt one and then go ahead and show you guys the long route of this patch, which is not fun. So we'll start the trip with that. I'm gonna go on over to the Trollheim patch now, maneuver down this mountain over here to the west, essentially just making my way out right down here. Once I've navigated that rock, then go ahead and navigate this next one on the southwest side, and you'll start to see this little opening over here, which is where we're gonna need to go. If you've done the quest, you'll be somewhat familiar with this area so go ahead and run to the west and then start to go north through here once you're coming up on this little cave entrance this is where the stony basalt would teleport you if you didn't have the achievement diaries completed then you'd have to go inside or if you have the achievement diaries completed it would just teleport you right up there if you're not lucky enough just go ahead run inside and then run to the south the door down here should be open and then just go ahead and head up this ladder really nothing too much to worry about once you're up here then go ahead and head to the north and start picking your herbs one thing to note is these two leprechauns that will be located at every patch, they're extremely useful. Also something I just did there and didn't even mention it, if you spam click the herbs, you end up yielding them quicker, so I'd recommend that. I'll show that again at the next patch and I'll do that throughout all of them. So these two leprechauns are really useful because they have all of these different items in here. You can store them, they're not naturally in here. If you wanna go ahead and store some items, I'd recommend doing that at the Cather B location because there's a tool leprechaun right here and a store right here. So you can load them up over there to hold all your tools and some compost if you need that as well well so i'd highly recommend that if you don't have the bottomless compost bucket he's so useful for being able to hold your compost not only that but you can also use your herbs on him if you'd like i usually clean my herbs but in this example i'm just showing that i can do either make sure whenever you planted your seed that you also use compost on it as well because that's going to be super useful that's the first location done. Now I'm going to go ahead and head off to some other early level ones. So I'm going to go to Camelot. I typically use the Camelot teleport rather than the Catherby one because I just don't have it set up in my house and I guess I'm not super efficient. I really should though. Sometimes I just like to take a step back and, you know, take a breather, enjoy the game. But once you get on over here, this is the location I was talking about before we can stock up. Go ahead and start picking the herbs. And as you can see here, when I double click, then he's like kind of glitches there for a second and starts picking them very quickly. So would highly recommend that. It speeds up your trips a little bit also works with the allotments and everything so once you've gotten done with that one make sure to use your herbs on them again and then head off to the next location 
Personally, I am saving these good seeds for the locations where your plants cannot die. So here's where I plant my Ranars. I'll go ahead and pick the rest of this plant and then drop her on down. Now that I got that location done, gonna go ahead and use the Ecto file and then head to the Northwest over here for the next patch. While I'm walking over here, it's nice to note that if you're ever running low on inventory space, if you're using a lot of allotment seeds and flower seeds and all that, I would try to use my inventory teleports first. So any basalts you have, use those. So that way you have more inventory space. Same goes for planting your good seeds early if you have multiple seeds but once you got over here go ahead and pick your herbs if you're a hardcore iron man do be on the lookout though because there is a vampire that roams here and can very much kill you so i'd be ready for that maybe you want to wear a ring of life or have your auto retaliate on that could help then the next location i'm going to go to is the explorer's ring patch this one is so much worse again if you have the phallid or run that you're going to have to do because this is just quite a ways down from that so would highly recommend the glory teleport if you have it if not just run on up here however you can right there i got a nice little hospori seed that was the boss that I was talking about earlier in the farming guild that you can kill. You just get those seeds randomly from farming throughout the game. So that's nice to see. Always replanting and composting. And then next, I'm going to go to the Ardoin area. This one's fairly easy to get to no matter which sort of teleport you're using. But with the achievement diary unlocks, it's just so nice. Basically puts you right there. Once you've gotten done, then go ahead and replant, of course, again. And then I'll head on over to the Icy Basalt. This one is another location where your herbs will never die. So given that that's the case, I like to use my Ranars here. So I'm going to go to the Farming Guild through the Skills Necklace Teleport. So once you get here, then go ahead and head to the west and your herb will be in here. Typically, I like to do this at the beginning or end of a run because then I can also do my farming contract as well and just kind of top off my entire trip. Leprechaun's right over there if you need him, and this should be the end of what I'd assume is almost everyone's trip. If you are cool enough to go ahead and use the Harmony Island farming patch, then all you're going to have to do is just teleport there and run south a little bit, and you'll be directly at where you'd like to be. Really not too much else that is different than any other patch I've talked about in this video. But yeah, that is going to be it for this herb run guide. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like. On top of that, anything you'd like to let me or others know, would love to hear in a comment down below. And if you want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. But that's it. Hopefully you have a wonderful day, and uh, peace.